Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I got a lot going on in this video. I'm gonna show you how I made that tarp system and how that functions. Uh, but we're also gonna do a bunch of other things. Gonna put in a car lift, gonna run some compressed air line, gonna run some electric wires, gonna do some structural reinforcing, all kind of unrelated things. So I'm gonna put them in chapters so that you guys can just skip to what you wanna see if you don't wanna watch the whole thing. So let's get to work. So here I've got the tarp laid out. That's going to go up and cover this section right here. Now this one's a little tricky because the roof has a pitch there. See the roof is, is higher over here and comes down on this side. So I'm going to do full length over there and then I'm going to actually fold the tarp as I attach it up here so that the tarp hangs vertically. So what I'm using to attach this tarp up there is drywall screw and a plaster washer. These are actually made for reinforcing plaster that's cracking. Works really well because it it spreads out the surface area. Okay, got it up. It's hanging relatively straight. I should have put my fixed lines up first because now that's a little bit in my way, but no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my fixed lines. Yeah, definitely put your fixed lines up first, then put your tarp up. So I'm doing a slip knot up here where I attach it at the top. I think this is the best way because it guarantees that it's going to stay on that screw. And what I use is, is called a uh, fisherman's knot. So I looked back at my footage on tying this uh, fisherman's knot and it wasn't very good. So let me do it in here. A fisherman's knot can be used for a lot of things, but in this case, I'm using it as a slip knot because I'm tying it over the other end. Cross over or cross under, and then go over itself. In other words, itself is, is this strand, and I'm crossing over it, I'm crossing over it again, and then I'm going down through like that. And that is your fisherman's knot. And because it's just over this strand, it'll now slide. Now you can put that over a screw, cinch it down, and that's not gonna come off. So it needs to go down to the ground, back up to a pulley, over to the wall, and then all the way back down where you can reach it. So I did a few extra feet just in case. And make two more and put those up. Okay, those fixed lines are up. This one here is the shortest one because it only has to come up to a pulley and over to the wall and then down. This one has to go up to the pulley over to the wall so it has it adds like six extra feet of length and then this one's going to add you know even more than 12 extra feet of length i think it's like 14 feet total width that's not going anywhere so full disclosure there's a lot of things in this video that aren't going anywhere but if I didn't say that, they'd go somewhere. All right, now you need to attach your pipe. This is four inch schedule 20 PVC. And I'm gonna leave the ends a little long. I can always cut those off later. So now your fixed lines need to come to the inside underneath. So here's my fixed line right here. So right across from it, I'm going to put a lag hook that will then carry the pulley. You take your pulley, put your line through the pulley. hook 
And meanwhile, I'm gonna have to complain to the management. These working conditions are just horrible. Okay, so now you can kind of see, I had the fixed lines coming down, they went under the bottom, comes up here, goes through a pulley, goes along, and then the next pulley's here, and there is the center line coming up to that pulley, so then the two lines meet, go through the same pulley, and they go along to the third pulley, right there, where it meets the third fixed line, and then it goes to a common pulley that you pull down with. Now, I might have been able to use the same pulley for those two, but these pulleys aren't really expensive, and this keeps the forces all straight up and down. Let's see if this thing works. Wow. Now I can tell you, you're gonna to wanna to put a bunch of knots in this cord just to make it easier to manage, but you have to have it all the way down before you do it. Otherwise you'll end up putting a knot that'll prevent it from functioning right. And just anchor it to the building. We'll see how it does. I mean, obviously in a real heavy wind, I probably just won't be out here and I'll put these up because, you know, a real wind is going to beat these things to death. And I don't think I did it the most efficient way. I think I should have measured out where it goes, put up the fixed lines, put up the eye hooks, put up the pulleys because they're right across from the fixed lines. Get your lines all in place, then put the tarp up and put the bottom on it and it'll roll up. Like don't have the tarp there in your way the whole time you're working with the lines. Those tuck in there pretty nice. I was wondering how they would do overlapping like that. Not a problem. So one of the big improvements to my addition is gonna be getting air out there. Because uh, it's annoying to have to run a long hose from one of my connections in the shop. Uh, I'm just going to have a permanent hose outside the shop. Now, I set this system up, when did I build this thing? 2009, 2010, somewhere like that. And I used PEX. I did some research and I found it was like approved in the UK, if I remember right. It was not approved in the US for air. But, you know, whatever. If it works in the UK, it's going to work here. I've had this since 2010, and I've not had a single problem with any of it. It runs upstairs to supply air to the wood shop up there, and then I've got a line running down here, <laughs> not even very well protected along the workbench, and it goes to a ball valve right there, and then to this cheapo hose reel. The hose reel is nice to have, but of course it leaks, which is the reason for the ball valve. This is where I primarily get my air. Uh, I'm going to move this outside. Here's my plan. That's an airline right there, and it's going up. That's actually going up to my wide belt sander upstairs. I'm going to put a T right there. I need to drill some holes over. I'm going to go up into that bay. We're going to run all the way to the other end of the shop and then out. And I'm going to hang the hose reel right on the other side of that wall over there. Clear as mud. So this tool just, just crimps it, 
just squeezes it just enough that the copper is now deformed and holding that fitting in place and I've never had one leak. Love PEX. Of course I use it mostly for water but um, works for air too. We are now tied in, and that's not going anywhere. If I had another PEX elbow, I would use it right here, but I don't. So I'm just going to bend it, and if it becomes annoying to me, then I can always add one later. All right, so we still got pressure in the tank. I had just turned off this valve that goes to the building. Hopefully I didn't forget to crimp any connections. We're about to find out. Okay, <laughs> apparently not. So the new line is pressurized. So here we are outside. So now we've got air out here, which is really nice. Not just for running tools, but inflating tires. A lot of times it's just the blow gun. I want to clean things off while I'm working on them. Not having to go inside and run the hose through the door and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, this is great. Leave it like that when I'm not using it so it doesn't sit there and slowly leak out all my pressure. So I rotationally graze my cattle and this is the dividing line. So this area has not been touched and this area they've had access to for just over two days. And you can really see they've, they've mowed it down. So I'm gonna set up a camera. We're gonna open this area up and let's watch them eat it. This is the same spot two days later <laughs> it's gone that's where they had been this was the new area and i just opened up another field beyond so they're happy to be over into that greener grass on the other side of the fence
actually a Scott store address. <laughs> So this post is set, it's plumb, it's all ready to go. It's not going anywhere. Now the issue is this slab is properly built for an outdoor slab. It's sloped kind of in that direction actually, but it, it falls in that direction two and a quarter inches to that post. And then that post is gonna need to be shimmed up slightly because it's also falling this way. So it makes it a little more complicated. I'm gonna fabricate something to put them at the same position and both plumb. I've also ordered some longer expansion bolts because with the amount of shimming that I'm gonna be doing on that, the expansion bolts would, that came with it would only be into the concrete like an inch, inch and a half, which is definitely not enough. This is my hive point. Essentially, that's a zero point. I, I only need the two and a quarter shim there. I don't need any more. This down here, you can see that it's it's dropped off. So this bolt here needs two and a quarter plus that amount. So I'm using my calipers and just doing some math and I can figure out how much additional length I need here. This will be two and a quarter. This will be plus a little bit. This will be plus a little bit more. And then as you go that way, it's gonna be even more and even more because the whole thing needs to tilt up this way and it also needs to tilt this way. So I know some of you are gonna say that I should just cut out the concrete here make a nice big eight inch thick slab underneath these posts and be done with it. I spoke to an engineer about exactly that and he really felt like it wasn't necessary. If the engineer says it's not necessary, it's probably not. So I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, there's a farmer named Joel Salat and I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but uh, reading one of his books, there was a quote that stuck with me and uh, it was something to the effect of, for a farmer, Close enough is perfect. In other words, if it works, then it's perfect. You don't need to go any further. And that's very true because you can you can waste all your time getting everything perfect down to the thousandth of an inch and then you don't get anything done. You know, when there's a lot to be done, you have to take it as far as it needs to go and no further. And that is the perfect answer. Going further and overbuilding things for no reason is really a waste of time and resources that could be better spent elsewhere. That said, I'm still guilty of overbuilding things sometimes. Oh. So now I need to drill out these holes, and I'm going to drill them slightly oversized so I have a little bit of flexibility. And I have just the tool for it, except this is stainless steel. Magnet on. You can see the light comes on. That magnet is on. Most stainless steel is non-magnetic, and this is not magnetic at all. There's a piece of regular steel. There. Now my stainless steel is magnetic. So drilling stainless can be challenging too, and uh, we are going to put these annular cutters from Evolution to the test. So these are high-speed steel annular cutters. That's one inch thick stainless steel, about 25 millimeters. 
And if you know anything about steel, stainless is tough and generally harder to work than mild steel. Man, that cut right through it. So how is this cutter after that? Man, it still feels razor sharp, and I really don't see any wear on it. I'm sure there's a little bit, obviously, but uh, nothing that I can see. That thing would happily keep cutting that stainless steel without a problem. All right, now I need bushings, and I'm gonna use this two inch. So, you know, it's gonna be a different length bushing at each bolt. It's not perfect and doesn't surprise me. I'll just do a little bit of, a, of shimming on the bottom and get that perfectly plumb. Got this board straight off the joiner it's nice and straight and parallel and you can see pretty darn level nothing exciting up here just lining up four holes sticking bolts through them Trying not to drop this thing on my head. Now I need to run these 
cables and it's kind of confusing how they work. All right, I got both cables in. Let's follow one so we can kind of see what it's doing. This is just, there's nuts on the other side of this. So this is pulling up on that carriage. So we'll follow that one. They both do the same thing, but in opposite directions. So it goes up and now it's this one, which goes all the way across the top. So there's that pulley going to this cable coming down and then it goes all the way down and right behind this to right here around that pulley and then back up on the back side I think you can see that and that back side comes up to a threaded rod and this nut basically when this carriage there's a hydraulic cylinder right there with a chain that pushes the carriage up. When it pushes the carriage up, it's going to pull this up and cause tension to be transmitted through the pulleys to that carriage and also pull this carriage up. And then this cable is the exact same thing in reverse. When this one pushes up, it's gonna push up on this, transmit tension, which is gonna pull that one. So they're equalizer cables. They ensure that they both pull equally what I think is cool is this is also a safety backup system as far as I can see. I mean, those are beefy cables. You're not breaking those things. And so that means like even if one hydraulic cylinder failed, the cable on the other side is still, from the other side is still gonna have it. Um, even if the safety locks weren't there, of course the safety locks are there. So in order for this thing to collapse, you'd have to have multiple simultaneous failures, which, you know, it seems highly unlikely. Now I need electricity to it, and I'm gonna bring it right down that pole there. We're gonna come across the ceiling coming out of the same hole that we brought the electricity for the lights. I'm going to hook this up with the panel live because I won't have any lights otherwise. The safest thing to do is throw the main breaker. Even if you throw the main breaker though, now on this panel, it's come, the power's coming in from underneath. These are going to be live no matter what you do, even if you hit that breaker. Uh, unless you can go to the feeds from this and shut those off, there's going to be something live in your panel. So you just have to be careful. You know, obviously you don't want to touch anything hot. The things that are hot are these bars right here that the breakers plug into. So that right there and anything kind of behind that line of breakers. Now this is a neutral strip here, that right there. You don't want to touch that, but that's not going to have the voltage that the hots have. And then this is, this is ground. This is actually continuous with the box. So it's fine to touch the ground wires, the bare wires in here. Obviously you need to make sure that those bare wires don't touch anything that's hot. We're going to put a breaker right there for this. All right, I feel obligated to say 
I'm doing this, but I'm not an electrician and you should hire an electrician. Don't do what I do. I'm an idiot. <laughs> so you might wonder how I'm able to make the connections to the hot without having to touch. Um, it's pretty easy, actually. You just do it with the breaker out. The breaker is what actually makes the connections. So we've got line one, line two. We've got our neutral and our ground all hooked up. All we have to do is pop the breaker into place. The breaker is off, so it won't energize the circuit. But it just kind of hooks in there like that. And then you push it in. And that's it. Now, if I were to flip the breaker, that would energize the circuit, but I'm not going to do that yet because the other end's not hooked up. All right, I've got that wire routed and it's all stapled up. Yeah, that thing's not going anywhere. This is the fitting that goes on the end of my conduit, but it's too big for what's already threaded in this box. So I'm just going to drill through the top. It can be a little tight in there, but there's plenty of room. Yeah, we can make that work. So I'm going to do something that is code compliant, but it's kind of unusual. Um, these are my wires coming in. I've got two hots, a neutral, and then the ground. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a 120 volt receptacle tapping into one leg of the 240. The 240 volts that the lift needs is between these. Each of these is 120 volts, but they're 180 degree out of phase so that there's 240 volts between the two. That's just standard North American electric setup. The lift draws 10 amps. These wires are 12 gauge, so they can carry 20 amps, and it's on a 20 amp breaker. So there's plenty of extra capacity to also run a plug. Um, and obviously, you're not gonna be running the lift long term. You lift and you stop. Most likely, this receptacle in the lift will not be used at the same time. Either way, this is perfectly safe, a little unusual. Some inspectors might not like it, but this is a barn. I don't have to follow inspections, so let's get it done. Okay, grounds are hooked up. I left this sticking out so that I can hook that to the receptacle. I can hook one hot to this because one's just going to go straight through. So let me hook those up. The neutral can just go straight to the receptacle. No issue there. So now I want to do a jumper for the last one. Okay. So the red hot coming in goes to white on the cord that's going over to the lift. Green is the ground going to the lift. It's also hooked to the box. It's also coming out to hook to the receptacle. The white is the neutral. The receptacle is the only thing that needs that. And then the black incoming hot, I jumped it so that I've got one coming out to the receptacle, one going over to the lift. Usually find giving it a twist is the easiest way to get it to go in the box.
okay there now you can see the joints are staggered from each other so much less likely to have any issues with shorting out tape those things up and roll on right no i imagine some of you are worried that that's what i'm going to do nope Keep it straight, John. So I actually don't know if solder joints like that make code, um, but I don't really care. <laughs> I looked inside here about just replacing that wire and running this all the way in, but it would have been a lot of work. This is fine. All right, I'm gonna go turn the breaker on. You watch for fire, explosions, disasters. So if I hit up, it should go up. safety latches. This thing actually works. Who'd have thunk it? And I don't think I ever showed you this plug. Those two being on means it's good and the red is not on. And just to verify something you can't see. So this stuff's pretty cool. It's made for setting steel posts and things like that that need to be very strong. You put it in, it doesn't shrink, so it stays where you put it. And it's got really high PSI ratings. Pretty good. Can you tell where the line was? I know, it's hard to tell. 
There's a lot of grass right here. They're just gonna eat it all. Eat it up, 71. She's a mowing machine. I also squeezed as much as I could around the periphery of this one. Certainly there's some air bubbles in there, but that will help distribute the weight very well. So it's been three hours. You can still see the line, but man, they have knocked that grass down. They were hungry. I didn't want to start with anything too heavy yet. I wanted to give that grout time to fully cure. That's not going anywhere. Well, that's kind of cool. I certainly didn't buy the lift to jack up my golf cart, but uh... Sometimes you do need to work under these things and they're so low to the ground, it's even worse than trying to work on a car. So pretty sweet. I got to figure out how to jack up my lawnmower too, or how to lift my lawnmower. And wouldn't you know it, my daughter's car needs a bunch of work on the rear brakes. Pads, calipers, and rotors. Normally I put brake grease on the back of the pads, but these have a, that's not metal there. So I guess you don't have to, it says silent guard, whatever. Well, first job with the lift done. I didn't show much of that. There are far better, better channels to learn how to do a brake job, but uh, that was the most pleasant brake job I've ever done. 
It sure beats uh, rolling around on the ground with a jack and a creeper. Yeah, I figured that wouldn't be perfect, but uh, it doesn't need to be. You know, with the steel and the bushings and everything, it probably would have been just fine without the grout. With the grout, that is bomb proof. That's not going anywhere. I will retorque these bolts once a week for the first month or so. Because everything's new, uh, things can settle a little bit and kind of loosen up. So you just want to keep torquing it until it stays just like you last put it. This lift also has a safety bar at the top with a limit switch so that if you lift a car too high, it pushes on that padded bar and throws the switch shutting it down. That way you can't accidentally crush a car against the top of the lift. <laughs> I didn't show installing all that because this video has gotten long enough and it was pretty easy. Nothing really exciting. Two things I want to do here. One is, since I built this, I've known that I need to reinforce the connection between the rafters and the building. The issue is, the ledger board is super solid. I've got structural lag screws. Uh, they're well into the studs. The ledger boards are not going anywhere. I made a mistake. Uh, you can see I left the bottom of the ledger board just whatever it was. I didn't bother to straighten it out or cut it to a dimension. Well, now when I try to put siding up against it, it's going to be annoying, but my fault. I should have thought that through before I put that board up. Right now, I want to reinforce those rafters because they are toenailed into the ledger and then they are screwed into the wall, but they're just screwed into half inch plywood, which is not a lot of holding power, especially under a big wind or something. And that is the building is the only thing that's presenting preventing this from racking in this direction. The braces are all to prevent racking in the other direction. So I need that building connection to be bomb proof. So let's fix that. So I've got this big giant piece of angle iron that's bent. Wonder how that happened. If I could straighten it out, it'd be a lot easier to cut into manageable pieces on the chop saw. God, this makes me feel like I need a helmet on. kind of scared. I was pushing on the jack so hard it felt like this thing could potentially shoot out, but I really don't think it would. Looking at the footage now though, I should have just thrown a chain over it. Just chain it to the press and that way it can't go anywhere. Yeah, this time I was actually worried something was going to go somewhere. That'll work. So this new Evolution saw, it's the same metal cutting chop saw with the impressive blade that I've used in the past, but it's set up like a regular miter saw. You can, you can rotate it either direction, you've got degree stops here, and much more accurate than your typical chop saw setup. And uh, yeah, this is really sweet. These clamps are really nice and solid, they're all quick adjust, and they've got this to be able to uh, manage with square stock or round stock, or you can just use the flat clamp if it's flat stuff. Sweet saw.
Okay, so I've got brackets on pretty much every other one. I put two on the ends and then every other one all the way down and then two on that end. And those are put in with Simpson strong tie screws made for hangers. I don't think that's going anywhere. See all that area up there from when I did my shop edition where you can see the Tyvek sticking through? I need to cover all that with siding. Ugh. It's not something I really want to do. It's a little too close to working on a porch. <laughs> Nothing exciting about it. I'm just screwing siding to a, a building. But I'm going to have to cut out for in between all the joists and everything. Or the rafters. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to get that done. I'm not going to make you watch it all. So... Man, I wish things went that fast. So, a couple areas, the boards, I flipped them around backwards. I'm going to paint this building next year, so that will all end up white. What do you think, guys? Should I end the video here? They say, what's a video? It's a movie. Sorry, that was awful. That's Emily, but they just got a new field. They never want to be pet when there's fresh grass to eat. Like, I'm busy. I got stuff to do. Yeah, I know that feeling. Get to it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. They are getting awfully comfortable with me. And they're getting big, too. Bye! <laughs> that's not going anywhere. And that's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, that thing's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. It's bomb proof. That's not going anywhere. The ledger boards are not going anywhere. Made for hangers. I don't think that's going anywhere.